When building your PC, it's very important to consider which motherboard you should buy. Some people decide on other components, like the GPU and the CPU first, and then look to find a compatible motherboard. And others start with the motherboard, making sure to get one that's as future-proof as possible and eligible for many hardware upgrades. And there are arguments for both of these methods. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Instead, we'd like to focus on another question. What size should your motherboard be? After all, motherboards come in a variety of shapes and sizes. But for the purposes of this video, Video, we'll be focusing only on the three most popular options for PC. These are ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ATX. But of course, size isn't the only thing that separates them. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look at all the things that set these motherboards apart so that we can see which ones are the best suited for whom. Now, we know we've just said that size isn't the only thing that sets them apart, but it's definitely not something that should be overlooked. As you might imagine, ATX is the largest of the three, measuring at 305 by 244 millimeters. Then there's Micro ATX, which is just as wide but a bit shorter, with 244 by 244 millimeters. And finally, there's Mini ATX, with only 170 by 170 millimeters. That said, the only reason why size should ever take precedence over the other, more important aspects is if you're you're looking to build a portable PC. In this case, you'll definitely start by considering the size of the motherboard and work your way up from there. On the other hand, you should never have to worry that your computer case is too big, because the cases that are big enough to support all of these sizes will support all of them. A much more important thing to consider for most people is the RAM capacity. Now this is where the bigger differences start to kick in. Both ATX and Micro ATX motherboards can support up to 4 RAM modules, but Mini ATX can support 2. Granted, you can still pack as many as 32GB of RAM should you use two 16GB sticks, so it's not like this makes Mini ATX unfit for gaming. In fact, even 16GB is more than plenty for gaming. But if you're a professional, then this is definitely something you should keep in mind so that you can keep up with all the RAM intensive software. The second thing we have to look at performance-wise is how many PCI Express slots each of these motherboards is sporting. When it comes to RAM capacity, we could say that Mini ATX was the runt of the litter with a 32GB cap and that the other two were standing on equal ground with both doubling the Mini's maximum capacity. But this isn't the case when it comes to PCI Express slots. In this regard, they're all different. ATX motherboards hold the lead here as they can have as many as 7 PCI Express slots. Micro ATX motherboards can have a maximum of 4 PCI Express slots while well, Mini ATX only has one slot. These slots are used by both graphic cards and expansion cards, like sound cards, internal modems, and such. So knowing how many of these slots you'll be needing is paramount in deciding which motherboard is right for you. One of the problems with Mini ATX motherboards, aside from the fact that it only has one of these slots, is the fact that it's placed at the very edge of the motherboard. So if the motherboard itself is a tight fit for a certain case, then any serious graphics card will definitely not fit without some extra space. And as always, performance isn't the only thing to keep in mind. The price of the product will always play a great role in your decision to buy it or not. And here at Gaming Scan, we're always looking to see what the most cost-effective solution is. You might think that the smaller the motherboard, the cheaper it would be because it takes less material to manufacture. But this isn't the case. It's the quality of the materials that will dictate the price. So don't be surprised if you find a mini ATX that's more expensive than a regular ATX. But in general, you'll usually find micro ATX motherboards to be the cheapest ones because they're in such high demand. So now that we know what the specs of each of these motherboards are, how can we go about determining which one is the best? The answer to this question will depend on the type of PC you'll be using and how many PCI Express and RAM slots you'll need. To simplify this a bit, we divided all PCs into three rough categories. Gaming PCs, workstations, and desktop PCs. We already said that Mini ATX's RAM capacity isn't really an issue for gamers, but would still advise against it on account of it having just one PCI Express slot, and such a terribly placed one at that. The only reason you should consider getting a Mini ATX motherboard is if you're building a compact and portable PC for obvious reasons. Just remember that you'll also need a good airflow and advanced cooling to stop the small case from heating up too much. 
and this goes double for powerful configurations. Our advice is to go with the micro ATX for most gaming rigs, and only use the ATX if you're building something truly high-end. A micro ATX motherboard simply has the best value. It has more than enough RAM slots to support even dual GPU setups, and still leave you some free slots for any additional PCI Express expansion cards. The only reason to go with an ATX motherboard is if you're really planning on putting the extra PCI Express slots to good use. We'll be using the term workstations to refer to PCs that professionals use. And even though these professionals will have high-end performance requirements, many of the things we said for gaming PCs will still hold true for workstations. Micro ATX is still the best option unless you're planning on making full use of the extra PCI Express slots that ATX motherboards provide. But you should definitely give Mini ATX a hard pass if you're building a workstation. These PCs often need greater RAM capacities than gaming ever will, so the 32GB cap might be worse and what's even more discouraging is the heat. Workstations place a lot of emphasis on CPUs, so you would need a superb cooling solution to stop the small case from overheating, especially if you're planning on overclocking the CPU. And finally, we have desktop PCs. This is the last category. And when I say desktop PCs, we mean computers that will mostly be used for internet browsing, multimedia, and some office work. Again, we have to go with the micro ATX as the optimal solution, but this time solely because it's the cheapest option. Of course, if you want a small and inconspicuous PC, then by all means go with the mini ATX. It's more than capable of running these kinds of computers. There is absolutely no reason to even consider ATX for internet surfing. And there you have have it, the specifications of these motherboards and the ideal ways to use them. We hope that we made this decision easier for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if we have and let us know which of these three you opted for down in the comments. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.